There are no weights in motor oil. Yep, that W in 5W30 doesn't stand for weight. It actually stands for winter. So when you see an engine oil that has a 5W30, it's called a multi-grade oil. So way back in the old days, we only had winter grades and summer grades. So you had a higher viscosity oil for the summer, straight grades as we actually were called back then. That straight grade was for the summer for the high temperatures. And SAE, who defines those viscosity grades, has a table. It's called SAE J3 100 and that's what defines those viscosity grades and back in the old days that summer straight grade was measured for the high temperature viscosity but if you lived in say minnesota or wisconsin or, or even canada right somewhere where it was really cold in the winter time that summer straight grade was too thick when it was cold because all oils get thinner as they get hotter inversely they get thicker when they get colder so that summer straight grade was too thick in the winter thus we had winter grades the w grades like a 10 w so a 10 w 30 engine oil is essentially has the winter cold flow characteristics of a 10 w and the summer high temperature characteristics of a 30. So that's what a 10W30 oil is. In fact, I believe Kendall Motor Oil was the very first multi-grade engine oil way back in, I'm not even sure when, but it was a long time ago. They came up with a multi-grade and they used additives to do that. Polymers in the oil that change, expand with temperature to change how the oil performs over that wide operating temperature. So let's really get into some of the details of the SAE J300 because that's really how to understand what the viscosity of your oil really is because viscosity is the most important characteristic of any lubricant and the SAE J300 category actually defines what that oil performance is. So we're gonna use our 10W30 oil as the example. A 10W30 means that the 10W part is the oil will have lower cold cranking value than 7,000 centipoise at negative 25 degrees Celsius. So you gotta remember all this stuff is done in Celsius, not Fahrenheit. So you can do the conversion on that and get those numbers where you need to be. But the idea is that the 10W30, that 10W is a cold cranking measurement. Not flow, but cold cranking. So what they do is they take the oil and they chill it down to negative 25 degrees and they put a rotor in the oil and they measure the torque that it takes to turn the rotor. And that's measured in what's called centipoise. That's different than centistoke. So centistoke is the summer high temperature flow rate where they actually take the oil, they heat it up, they pull it through a capillary and they measure the time it takes to go from point A to point B. That is measured in centistokes. So viscosity in that centistoke terms is really a fancy word for resistance to flow. That's what we're measuring is the resistance to flow, both at high temperature with centistokes and at cold temperature with centipoise. I know they both say centa, but we gotta remember, one is a flow measurement and one is a rotational torque measurement. That's the key difference. So you can't say that a 20W50 is a 20 when it's cold and a 50 when it's hot. That is not true. That would have meant that the oil got thicker as it got hotter and that never ever happens. The 20W is a different measurement, torque versus flow. That's the key difference. Also, those winter grades have what's called a cold pumping test as well. Because the idea is you wanna make sure not, not only will the crankshaft turn over, because that's why it's rotational, will the crank turn over in the oil at that temperature? That's test number one. Test number two is can the oil pump actually flow the oil, move the oil through the engine at that temperature? So what they do is they actually go five degrees colder 
on the cold pumping test just to make sure the oil can pump and flow through the engine that way because hey, proper lubrication is really simple it's the four r's the right oil which means it's the right viscosity and additive package for the application we'll cover that in another video but at the right place at the right time and the right amount so you got to have those last three of the four R's to have proper lubrication. So that's what that cold pumping is all about. we got to get the oil where it's supposed to be, when it's supposed to be. That way it can properly protect the engine. So that's why we have a five degree colder temperature test with the cold pumping. So we know the crankshaft will turn over and we know we can get oil to it. That's what's going to give it. So we begin with a 25W. It has less than 13,000 centipoise at negative 10 degrees Celsius. So that's 18, let's say that's about 14 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you live somewhere where it's pretty cold, where you get down below, you know, 14 degrees Fahrenheit, you get into the teens, the single digits, even negative, you don't want to be running a 25W. That's going to be too thick. You're going to have problems with your engine in terms of having that proper flow. A 20W is 9,500 or less centipoise at negative 15 degrees. Then we go to a 15W, which is less than 7,000 centipoise at negative 20. The 10W is less than 7,000 centipoise at negative 25. You're getting the pattern here, right? Then the 5W is less than 6,600 centipoise at negative 30. And then the zero grade, the zero W, is less than 6,200 at negative 35. And the cold pumping on that is less than 40 degrees, right? So you gotta get even colder than that. So that's the whole idea. Super low temperatures, when it's really cold, that's where that zero W really plays in, becomes huge is that it flows so much better at low temperature, which is one of the reasons why zero W oils are very popular now with the OEMs because they provide great fuel economy because the oil flows so much better at cold start and at low engine temperatures where there's that thick oil is just gonna rob horsepower, which robs fuel economy, that lower viscosity grade, is going to get the job done but we'll cover viscosity index which is how those lower viscosity grade oils still provide great protection part of it is viscosity index part of it is, is better additive package and better lube engineering we'll cover that in another video today we're talking about sae j300 so that's the winter grades now let's talk about the summer grades that the back half the high temperature part of that sae grade what makes it a 30? Well, any oil that's between 9.3 and 12.5 centistokes at 100 degrees C, also 212 degrees Fahrenheit, is a 30 grade, as long as it has a high temperature, high shear, HTHS, that's greater than 2.9 centipoise. So that's high temperature, high shear, is what's the viscosity of the oil under heat and load. So we're looking at as we're measuring load, being back to rotational torque again, at 300 degrees Fahrenheit, 150 degrees Celsius. And that helps kind of understand how much polymer is in the oil. Because those polymers that make an oil a multi-grade oil, how they expand with temperature, well, those same polymers can actually shear and thin out under load. That's why it's important to have the HT HS value to understand, well, what's that viscosity under some load? That way you can see what's the viscosity actually happening in your engine, because there's gonna be load in your engine that's gonna stretch those polymers. So we wanna know what the viscosity is under real conditions, not just laboratory conditions. So that's what the HTHS gives you. So you combine the flow rate, the Cinestokes, along with the HTHS, that's gonna give you what that high temperature performance is, and you can bracket that along with your winter temperature to be able to understand how is your oil gonna behave and perform over a wide range of temperatures and loads. That's what the SAE J300 is gonna let you see. It's give you an idea, what are these oils all about? So one of the things we can see is that you start going through those summer grades We've actually revised SAE J300, and we now, where it used to be 20 was the lowest summer grade, now we can go all the way down to eight. But the real difference is you can see, some of the Cinestoke values change. So the maximum Cinestoke value for an eight is 6.1. The low is four Cinestokes. 
the 12 is a five centistoke uh, minimum with a 7.1. So there's some crossover there. So what's the differentiation when there's a crossover of the same viscosity in terms of centistokes? Ah, it's to the HTHS because you can see that, hey, that well might be, say, six centistokes, but what's it gonna make it an eight versus a 12, it's going to be that high temperature, high shear. What's that viscosity acting like under load? That's going to determine the difference between those. Same thing with the 16 grade and even the 20. There's still some crossover. So the 16 and the 20, they could both be 7.2 centistokes. Which one's a 16? Which one's a 20? It's all down to the HTHS value and how it's going to respond under load. And that's a big part of how much polymer is in the oil and what type of polymer is in the oil. Again, that's a big deeper discussion for another video. But then you can see that you know, from a 60 to a 50 to a 40 to a 30 to 20, as they step down, they're all ranges. And one of the interesting things about a 40 is that there's a kind of a different set of rules if an oil is a 040, a 540, or a 10W40, it gets to have a lower HTHS and still be a 40 compared to a 1540, which is a big part of the diesel oils. And the diesels actually have their own set of HTHS values for fuel economy. Again, that's a whole nother discussion on another video because when we came out with CK4 and we came out with GF6, which is A and B, we've kind of split some of these HTHS values for fuel economy. So before it was very clear, today you gotta to really watch the details and understand SAE J300 is such an important document. If you're really trying to get the maximum fuel economy, the maximum performance out of your engine, you have to understand viscosity. And unfortunately, just looking at the label and looking at what SAE graded is, isn't gonna tell you everything you need to know. If you dig into SAE J300, you can understand those numbers behind the viscosity grades better, and that's the key to really fine-tuning and unlocking the best performance and the best durability for your engine is understanding that. Now, of course, we're talking about all this temperature. That's why understanding the operating environment you're in is so critical. If you're in Canada, what the right viscosity for you is gonna be different than if you're in Puerto Rico in July. But the ambient temperature is gonna make a big difference. Same engine, two different places totally, the right viscosity is gonna be different based on that application because of the environment. Application always dictates chemistry and SAE J300 is a great way of having knowledge that's very powerful to choose the right viscosity for your application. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.